Let's talk about the differences between primary versus secondary. What goes on in primary and what goes on in secondary? When should you go from primary into secondary? Those are just a few of the things that we're going to talk about in this video. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Okay, let's first talk about primary fermentation. <laughs> what goes on during primary fermentation? All right, you've already added in all of your juice and your fruit and your sugars and whatever necessary water to bring it up to your, your given level. You're now ready to start adding your yeast, your little microcelled organisms that are going to convert all of that sugar into wine. Now, how does it do that? It does that by taking whatever oxygen is currently in your mixture and whatever sugar is in your mixture, it will convert that again into alcohol and CO2. Now, this part of the process, to give it a fancy name, is called aerobic fermentation, which means that there's still a lot of air in your must. In fact, during the first three to five days, or at least during the first three days, you want to make sure that you give it a stir to incorporate some additional air to give the yeast a little something to breathe. While it's, while it's working as hard as it can to multiply and start the production process. During that first three to five days, 70% of your alcohol is going to be produced during that period of time. Also, there's going to be the creation of something called um, malactic acid, which is kind of a tart acid that gives one kind of a tart taste to it. Uh, that's also going to be, be produced during that period of time. That is primary fermentation. Now, after that three to five day period, or as long as a week or two, depending on how you feel about it, it's going to be necessary to transfer your must from your primary fermenter into your secondary fermenter. So you kind of get the meaning, your first fermenter into your second fermenter, primary, secondary. Okay. Uh, here is where the bulk of the wine characteristics are really going to be developed because here you're going to give your wine time to uh, produce the, the remaining 30% of the alcohol that uh, your wine is capable of producing. It's going to start the process of uh, changing the uh, uh, malic, <laughs> malic acid into uh, lactic acid. So it's going to mellow out that, that, that what I refer to in my, my wine tasting videos as that harsh taste at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the sip. Well, that's going to mellow all of that out. And that's going to occur during during the aging process, which is why you give it several months to <laughs> several years in some cases for that to occur, to get develop the full flavor of the wine. It's also going to be releasing some of the built-in CO2 that, uh, that was developed during, during primary fermentation. And that's one of the reasons why you generally maintain an airlock in your secondary fermenter. Uh, that's what's going to occur during secondary fermentation. Oh, one other thing to note about the differences between primary fermentation and secondary fermentation is that during primary fermentation, your airlock is going through <laughs> a lot of activity as that uh, CO2 gas is being produced. During secondary fermentation, things have pretty much died down to just one bubble every 10 or 12 minutes or, or, even, or even longer. So again, activity has slowed down quite a bit. Secondary fermentation is also when you're going to see a lot more of the sediment begin to fall and, and your wine beginning to become a lot more clear. Uh, each subsequent rackings, moving this from secondary to another secondary container, you're pretty much removing a lot of that clear wine off of the dead lease, dead yeast basically, and putting it in another container so that it can then continue on the process of clearing and uh, converting the uh, mat, uh, malic acid into uh, lactic acid, mellowing out the flavor. At some point, it's going to become clear enough where you can just simply, simply say, hey, it's done. You can go ahead and bottle it and then basically drink it. Now, there's nothing stopping you from drinking this during the early stages. When I was first starting to make wine in a little, uh, little Welsh's grape juice, uh, uh, two quart containers. Hey, I was drinking it after about three or four weeks, calling myself having made wine. However, I mean, there are some changes that, that have occurred since then. One, I began to realize that, hey, 
It's really touch tape. Tastes like crap. And it's 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 cloudy because there's a lot of the sediment that's still floating around, basically still used to still converting that into, into wine. So as time went on, basically I've learned to pace myself and to learn the the, the, the virtue of patience and allow the wine to become clear to actually become a better tasting wine, uh, which is a process that I'm sure many of you have gone through in your, your early winemaking stages. I'm still a novice. I'm still learning. That's one of the things that I've learned when going from primary to letting it sit <laughs> for, for months on end in the secondary before calling myself how you made a very tasty bottle of wine. Now, one other thing to note, I mentioned earlier that during uh, aerobic fermentation, where there's a lot of air being introduced into your musk and you're stirring it, up, stirring it up for the first couple of days to get in more air, that's not something you want to do during secondary fermentation. That's going to, that's, this is a good thing, stirring it up, getting air. It's a bad thing, stirring it up and getting air, because it, it will basically destroy your wine. Basically, you'll end up just being just a flat, tasteless piece of, piece of garbage, or you start the process of converting it into vinegar. That's something you don't want to do. So again, airlock or tight-fitting caps and just loosen every every few days to let out some of the built up CO2 is what you want is what you want to do here in terms of stirring it up getting in air it's what you don't want to do here in terms of uh in terms of aging and, and bottling you want to keep out as much of that air as possible unless it's unless you plan on just creating vinegar now just in case someone out there might have noticed that my primary fermenter isn't percolating <laughs> the way you would expect primary fermentation to, 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 to happen. It's really very simple. Uh, this is actually ready for racking. In fact, as soon as this video is over with, <laughs> I intend to do just that. I'm going to move this from primary into secondary. The only reason why I haven't done it yet is because when I was getting ready to do the, the, the racking from primary into secondary, I decided, hey, you know what? This might be a good idea for a video. And there we go. That's why this is just sitting here, not doing what it's supposed to be doing anymore because it doesn't need to. And it's ready to go from here into here. There we go. So if you find any of this of any interest, please click on the subscribe button and I will continue to do these on a more regular basis.